Welcome in the first video for the online Archon workshop Object Photogrammetry for Archaeology. The background and basic principles have been discussed in the online lecture. In this video we will look into the things that you need to create the optimal conditions for a photogrammetry project. All things left aside, you basically just need two things, a camera and a computer. The camera can be any kind of camera. From the camera of your phone to a professional DSRL with 43 megapixels and a full frame sensor. However, camera specs do matter and better cameras generally create more detailed and accurate models. Since the camera is so important, it serves you well to understand the basics of photography. A separate video in this series is dedicated to the camera and its settings. Another choice to make is the number of cameras. One camera is enough for most projects, but professional businesses often work with photogrammetry rigs that include 5, 30 or even more synchronized cameras. Of course, this comes at a cost, but it enables you to greatly increase the speed of recording and reduce the cost of human work hours. With a large rig, you can also shoot moving subjects, like people or animals. But live subjects are, of course, slightly less likely to occur as subjects for an archaeological project. At the 4D lab, we only use photogrammetry occasionally, so we shoot with a single camera. Having a computer is, of course, quite essential. And with photogrammetry, the higher the specs, the better. Aside from a CPU, the central processor of your computer, many photogrammetry processes use the power of a GPU, the graphics processor. So it serves you well to invest in a good graphics card. Many cheap laptops come with a so-called integrated graphics card. That means it's just a tiny part of the CPU. These are not very fast. It is also recommendable to invest in RAM memory, since large datasets of pictures need to be stored in it. If nothing of this is available to you, you can still do photogrammetry, but be prepared to wait. And at a certain point you will run into a project size limit. Your computer may make this clear to you the hard way with a crash. What else do you need? Well, lamps are highly recommendable. The camera's functioning is very dependent on the amount of light. Too little light and the camera won't work well enough. We also want to create a setting which creates as little reflections and shadows on the subject as possible. Reflections and shadows may confuse the computer vision algorithms and may also create ugly texturing effects in the final model. You do not need specialized equipment, but basic lamps with some light diffusing material, such as white paper, or as in this example, shower caps attached to it, are a very useful addition to your kit. As you just need to light the side of the object facing the camera, three lamps are sufficient for single camera setups. White light is best for a balanced and neutral color capture. Look for so-called daylight lamps, which are lamps that have a color temperature of 6000 to 7000 degrees Kelvin. If you do not know the color temperature of your lamps, any whitish light works fine. A light box is also a cheap and recommendable item that helps to create diffuse light. Each photogrammetry project generally needs some experimentation to create the best light conditions. So take some time for this. Larger and more complex objects, like this project we did in the Rijksmuseum, may need more or stronger lamps and more time for finding the right setup. The photo studio also includes a monochrome background. This comes in handy when you have to mask the images later in the process. Also, background objects can confuse the computer algorithms if you rotate the subject while the background object remains static. As background color you can have white, grey or black, which all work fine. However, make sure the background is contrasting with your subject. Another useful item is a turntable. 
There are automatic ones, but manual ones work perfectly well and are even preferable as it allows for a small manual adjustment during the process. A turntable should have rotation degrees indicated on it to control the distance for each rotation. If you use a turntable, the camera should be mounted on a tripod. In general, a tripod is quite a useful piece of equipment. It gives you much more freedom to fine-tune the camera settings, as you can lower the shutter speed of the camera without creating unsharp pictures due to motion blur. The next recommendable item is a scale bar. In fact, it is essential if you want to create a model with the correct absolute real-world scale. It goes without saying, this is probably the most important aspect for archaeological documentation. The scale bars I use are custom made, designed in Inkscape and include coded markers. These markers are placed at exactly 15 cm from each other and are automatically recognized by Metashape, the software we are going to work with. The scale bar with markers makes it much easier to scale 3D objects at the end of the process. They can be generated automatically from within the software. Note that my scale bars have different backgrounds to ensure the software does not mix up the identical graphical elements. It also adds more reference points that may help the 3D reconstruction algorithms. However, this is not essential and the simple white piece of cardboard or paper with two markers may be sufficient. However, a non-transparent, non-reflective ruler will also work. The last thing you may need to think about with archaeological objects is proper support. To be able to photograph an object from all sides, you often need to reposition it at least once. Especially with fragile items, proper support is therefore essential. Things that can help are pieces of foam that you cut in any shape, a netable eraser to stick them to the turntable. The material of the support should be chemically inactive in order not to damage the surface of a fragile piece. So this is basically it. To recap, your shopping list now includes a computer, a camera, a tripod, a turntable, a large piece of monogram paper for background, three lamps with diffusing paper, optionally a light cube, a scale bar or ruler, not transparent nor reflective, and pieces of plastic foam and netable eraser. Of course, you can buy none of this and still do photogrammetry with an app on your phone. But if you want to use it for documenting an archaeological object, this is the list of essentials. So, this was it, the first video in the series. In the second video, we will look in more detail at cameras and their settings. Thank you for paying attention and see you in the next video.